Hi, this is Trey Pass. I'm going to do a reaction to another Mr. Nightmare story. This one is called Three True Disturbing Fall Horror Stories. Like I said, I'm a big fan of Mr. Nightmare, so let's react to that, and I'll be right back. Okay, let me put my headphones in. Okay. Okay, here we go, right? Now, go. Fall Horror Stories. Scarecrow, story one. When I was a really little kid, this local small amusement park that used to be opened by us would hold this annual event called Pumpkin Land, Pumpkin Land, which was held on the Saturday before Halloween, where candies would be given out to kids in between rides, and pumpkins would be scattered throughout the park for families to pick up and take home before leaving. Uh. I always looked forward to it, and this one particular year when I was seven, we were going right after my soccer game. The park also rewarded kids for coming in costumes, so I was going in my cliche scream costume. <laughs> Anyway, my parents took my two siblings and I, and when we got there, my brothers begged to go on the haunted house ride first, and then the roller coasters. Basically, they wanted to do the most thrilling rides first. Anyway, my mom and two brothers got in one of the cars for the haunted house ride. Since they only seated four, my dad stayed with me on the line so we could ride together. Okay. And I think as I started to get cold feet, I felt like I needed to use the bathroom. Okay. So we got off the line, and my dad led us to the bathroom. He went too, but I finished first, so I waited outside the bathroom. I waited for a while. I was kind of confused. Eventually I went back to the bathroom, and my dad wasn't in there. That's when I started to panic. I was alone in a huge crowd of people, and at seven years old I was actually scared of being lost. Yeah. Eventually a man came up to me and asked where my parents were. I told him I couldn't find my dad, and I asked him for help. He took my hand and said, we're going to go find them. I remember him leading me with a tight grip of my hand, and suddenly he pulled out his archaic Nokia brick cell phone and started talking to someone on the other end. The only major thing I remember him saying was, oh, I'm with him right now, as he looked down at me and smiled. Then he said, okay, and hung up. He looked at me again and said that, that was my dad, and that he was waiting by the parking lot. He continued to lead me, mm -hmm. but even at seven years old, I wasn't an idiot. I was wise to the fact that my dad did not have a cell phone, and that this stranger probably didn't know my dad. How would he even know who I was if I was under a scream mask? Exactly. As we were approaching the front gate to the park, I spotted a female employee and started saying excuse me over and over until I got her attention. Okay. Then I said I don't know him, please help. Good. The man defended himself, saying he knew my dad and was trying to get me to him. Mm -mm. But the employee took my side and asked me to come stand by her so she could use the loudspeaker to find my parents. Good. The man didn't stay a second longer after that. He walked away quickly into the parking lot. The employee announced over the park intercoms that a child in a scream costume was missing his parents and gave my name. Eventually my dad came running over waving his hands. He was a nervous wreck. The employee told him of the potential predator and the possible attempted kidnapping and that's when he lost it. When my mom came over, she was just as furious. My parents asked the manager to see the surveillance footage. Somehow, at that time, the amusement park didn't have any surveillance cameras, according to the manager. Mm. Still, my parents thanked that employee for getting me away from that man, and we tried to have a normal day after that. <laughs> I was too young to realize the severity of the potential situation I had just avoided. Yeah. Obviously, remembering it as an adult is a lot more sickening to think about. Yeah, you're a smart kid. Story two. When my mom and stepdad went on their honeymoon, I wasn't trusted to watch the house for the week, so they sent me to my Uncle Ronnie's farm. He lives with my Aunt Susie and my cousin Ronnie Jr. Huh. They have a spare bedroom upstairs that I stayed in. It's an old-fashioned style wooden farmhouse. It's big and nice, though. The spare bedroom overlooked the crops, and the numerous scarecrows my uncle had scattered through the crops. <laughs> this was in mid-October a few years ago, and my uncle was mid-harvesting his corn at this time of the month. Okay. He asked for my and Junior's help. Weirdly, it wasn't tedious work, like I kind of enjoyed doing it. He wasn't using his combine, instead we were just hand-picking a bunch of corn. I had this little rolling basket-like thing that I was supposed to fill up. I admired the three scarecrows he had. They looked like he put a lot of work into them. <laughs> they had sweatpants on and varying flannels, along with straw hats over their heads. Okay. 
when we were done picking the corn. I asked Uncle Ronnie how long it took to make those. He said a few hours at most, hmm. and he said they really do the trick keeping the crows away for the most part. Okay. That night after dinner, I played video games and smoked weed with Junior for a little bit. Then I just went to the guest room to do whatever on my laptop. Yeah. Next thing I knew, a rock or something hit the window. It scared me for sure, because yeah. there's no way that wasn't intentional. Okay. I didn't want to go look out the window to check, hmm. though. I just closed my laptop screen so there would be total darkness in the room. Okay. I crossed my fingers it wouldn't happen again. But when a second rock hit the window, my heart felt like it dropped out of an airplane. Mm -hmm. The room was still completely dark, oh, so I gave it a minute before getting up to peek out the window. There was a full moon out, and one of the outside lights was on, both lighting up a decent amount of the crops and one of the scarecrows. Okay. I continued to look around, but when I saw something moving in the corner of my eye, I looked back at the scarecrow to see one of its arms waving at me. Ah! No, surely I was hallucinating. The waving stopped, and the arm moved back down to its side. I shut the blind and wanted to throw up. I ran to Junior's room and opened the door, but by this point in the night, he was already asleep. I closed his door and checked downstairs for my aunt and uncle, but all the lights were off downstairs, so I checked their bedroom, and they too were both asleep. I went back to my room and lifted the blind just enough to peek out there. The light outside was now off, but with the bright moonlight, I was able to see the scarecrow was still hung up on the stick. I looked out that window for over a minute, waiting for it to move again. But the longer I waited, the more I realized I must have been higher than I realized. I finally dropped the blind back down and climbed into bed. The next morning, I went downstairs to my Aunt Susie making us all pancakes. My uncle was already outside doing work. Aunt Susie called Junior down to eat before all the pancakes were gone. Okay. At around that same time, my uncle stormed into the house, asking, where did the goddamn scarecrows go? Ah. My heart dropped. The three of us went outside, my uncle leading us to show us that all three scarecrows were missing from their posts. Yeah. That's when I told them about what I saw last night, and how at first I thought I just imagined it, <laughs> but now it made sense. The nightmarish realization hit me that somebody did in fact throw rocks in my window. Yeah. They did see me looking out, and someone was posing as a scarecrow. Yeah. That night when we were all sleeping, the doorbell rang continuously at like one or two in the morning. I heard my uncle and Junior yelling in the hallway and running down the stairs, so I followed. When he opened the front door, the three scarecrows were posted up right in front of the porch, ah! all with red paint stains covering them, mimicking blood. My uncle called the police and turned on all the outside lights on the property. The police, as well as my uncle, chalked it up to some stupid early Halloween prank by a bunch of immature kids. But the possibility that it wasn't, and that it may have been a much more hostile motive behind this, is what really freaked me out. Yeah, I'm lying. Story three. It was November. All the leaves were varying shades of yellow and orange. Okay. My favorite time of year to visit the countryside. Okay. I was with my girlfriend at her dad's upstate home, which was usually used as a summer home, but the two of us came up there to go camping in the nearby woods. Okay. The home had all the needed camping supplies, including the tent, so we parked there and took the camping stuff into the woods. Why? Just the experience of camping and sleeping in the woods, I guess. I've only been camping a few times in my life, but I liked camping in the fall because there's less bugs and of course you can't beat the foliage. We were camped out in a small circular clearing, just big enough for our tent and campfire. We sat around the fire for about an hour, eating and just talking. Okay. Then we went inside the tent. We kept the fire going as it made my girlfriend feel safer, and it added a bit of warmth. Ah. Besides the sound of the crackling fire, we eventually started hearing leaves crunching in the distance. My girlfriend and I looked at each other. She put her finger up to her lip. I could tell she was nervous. Fires usually repel wildlife from approaching, so as the crunching of the leaves got louder, it got more suspicious. The footsteps also sounded bipedal, like a human's footsteps. The crunches got louder until they stopped around the fire. Then we noticed the shadow outline of someone standing out there, and then they sat down on one of the chairs. But they didn't say a word, so I finally decided I was going to peek my head out and check. 
I looked out to the campfire, expecting to see someone sitting on one of the chairs, but there was no one out there. I got up on my legs to look around the campsite, into the trees and darkness. I didn't see anyone out there. My girlfriend was whispering something. It sounded like she was urgently trying to get my attention. Okay. So I crawled back inside, and she said, What does he want? I replied, There's no one there. She replied, What are you talking about? I see him in the chair right now. I looked at the wall of the tent and saw the shadow outline of the person still sitting in the chair by the fire. Mm. I realized that was impossible, though. I crawled back out of the tent to look one more time, okay. and both the chairs were still empty. I went back inside and said to my girlfriend, we need to go right now. <laughs> she didn't ask questions. She got straight up, took my hand, and followed me out of the tent. Good. When she saw there was no one sitting in the chair, she screamed. I yelled at her to shut up. <laughs> and I led us through the near total darkness in the direction back to the uh. normal home. While running, we heard this horrible groaning sound not too far away from us, and one single loud crash of a tree branch or something. Oof. This caused both of us to scream, oh shit, and run even faster. Good. How we found the property was by repeatedly pressing the car lock button until we finally heard the car horn. We went into the mobile home, locked the door, and hid under the covers in the safety of the bedroom. Yeah. Still, I didn't feel entirely safe being surrounded by nothing but woods in every direction. Exactly. And I was paranoid that whatever was out there followed us. I let my girlfriend sleep while I stayed up listening for sounds. I thought I heard a clicking or something from the front door to the home, but that might have been my paranoia playing tricks on me. Yeah. I fell asleep eventually, and when we woke up, we went back for the tent and supplies, scared shitless while doing so. Nothing was moved except for the one chair we thought we saw the shadow sitting in. It was knocked over. Yeah. We hurried back to the car, drove home, and that was our last camping adventure. Exactly. Get out of the damn... Screw the camping, okay? That's just... Uh, I ain't doing that. <laughs> that's just... That's crazy. Ugh. Uh, uh. That's just insane. That is just truly insane. Okay, just truly, truly. Okay. Now, that first story was freaky, but the kid was smart, okay? Uh, yeah, he knew he got leading them out to the parking lot. Come on. And he, luckily, he got the lady's attention at the front gate, okay? Because that could have ended really tragically. And I wonder where the father was. How, how come... How come when you went to the bathroom, you forgot about your son? That's just, that's insane. I know the mother fight, fight, was probably yelling at the father too. How the hell are you gonna lose your son? It's just you and him. You go to the bathroom. You push, keep your son in, in your sights. How do how you just let your son disappear? And it could have ended really tragically, okay? So that's a good thing. Like I said, good, that kid was smart. He didn't, luckily he knew enough not to, to make a noise, a commotion and get another adult's attention. Cause that dude had probably had bad intentions to leading you out of the, by the parking lot. He probably gotta throw you in a van and and take you off and take off with you. Oof! Thank God you were smart enough to recognize that you had to make a noise and, and get an adult, another adult's attention. And that second story, that was just somebody messing with you, with your with your, with your uncle with the scarecrows and stuff. Come on, it's obvious. Somebody you know, probably one of the kids in a local town or something, know that you have those scarecrows in there and they they're being assholes. And decide to, you know, play with the scarecrows and snatch the scarecrows and then put them in the front of your house. Come on. Like I said, you should have told your uncle and, and ha had them call the cops first when you saw it, that thing waving. Obviously, that was somebody, you know, with the scarecrow. Somebody, obviously, that took it down. So you should have called the cops and the cops could have maybe even caught those guys that night. Okay. And then they try to be real funny and bring them back and leave them in front of the, the you know, come on. That's just, that's insane. And the third story. <laughs> I think he said, told your girlfriend to shut up. She starts screaming, says, shut up. Yeah, don't go, don't, don't go out in the woods unless you got a gun. Don't go out into the woods, okay? Don't go camping unless you got a weapons with you, okay? Because you don't know what's out in the woods. Animals, human beings, psychopaths. And, and Take a gun with you. Don't go camping by yourself with you and your girl without a weapon. I'm sorry. That's just, I think that's one-on-one. -on -one. When you go camping anywhere, you got to bring a weapon with you. 
okay you got a weapon preferably a gun okay not a knife so you because knife you have to get up on somebody to to use it a gun you can shoot at a distance okay no don't go camping like exactly because especially if you've never been camping then you hear all these weird noises or freak you out and all that stuff but don't go without a gun okay that's just 101 camping 101 okay don't go camping anywhere especially like i say you've never been camping before it's your first time or whatever and no you need a gun you need a weapon because come on you ain't gonna take no chances Anyway, let me know what you think of this story, Mr. Nightmare. That first, again, the first story was really the, the best to me. That was just obviously a pervert, a pedophile trying to take a young kid, so a young kid by itself. And I don't know what the father was thinking, how he missed his son, how he didn't wait for his son outside the bathroom. Come on, you both going at the same time. Come on, you son going to stall, and you going to stall, and you wait for your son. Or he goes and use an urinal and you use the other urinal and you keep your son in your line of sight at all times. That's your son, okay? I don't know how what he was thinking that that he could lose his son. That's just that's that's insane, okay? Anyway, again, I leave a link to Mr. Nightmare's channel in the description box so you can check it out for yourself. Also, I have links to my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram in the description box, as well as a link to my other channel, Paul Views and Opinions. Please check that out as well. And this is Trey Pastor saying so long and take care.